Hi guys, welcome to Simple Programming. In this video, let us see how to make use of other rate of JSON property. Other rate of JSON property is a field level annotation and it can be used for multiple purposes. Let me give you a scenario and let us try to solve that scenario using one of the other rate of JSON property annotation. All right, the scenario is the variable field in the model object should have a name ID and your JSON request and response object will have a different name student ID. Let us try to solve this scenario by going into our Eclipse IDE. All right, the scenario given to us is the ID field in the model object is going to have the name ID, whereas the request and response object will be having the name as student ID. Let us try to solve this using at the rate of JSON property. At the rate of JSON property helps you to give a name for your field. We have given a JSON name as student ID for our field ID in the student class. Let us try to run this and let us try to examine the behavior. Before running it, I have a breakpoint here so that we'll understand how the mapping happens. Let me quickly run this. The server is up and now let us try to go to our postman. So here's my postman. I have a student ID field name and school. Let me click on send. All right, we have got the student object now and you could see here the student ID field has been successfully mapped to the models ID field and I'm going to return the same student object which has ID name and school. Let us see how the output is. The output should come as student underscore ID. It should not be ID field. Let's click on run again. And let's go to our postman. All right, you could see here, right? The student ID is now 123ABC. So this is how you give a name to your JSON element and map it to your model using at the rate of JSON property. Here is our next scenario. Use same model object for both request and response. That is, use the same student object for request as well as for response. Some fields can be only used in the request. Some fields are only meant to be sent in the response, which means our student object can contain like 10 fields. And let us say only seven fields can be used in the request and three fields are meant to be sent back when a response goes out from our API. A pretty tricky situation, right? This situation can be easily handled using at the rate of JSON property. Here is my model object. So in this model object, my request elements are going to be ID, name, school, section, and major. My response elements are going to be response code and response text. So I'm going to use the same model object for request as well as for response. I'm not going to have a student request and student response kind of model. It's going to be one model that is going to serve the purpose of request and as well as the response. What challenge do you have here? Let's say, for example, if someone sends you a request with response code in the request, your model will accept it. But we don't want that. We don't want the response code be accepted even if the end user sends you the field accidentally in the request. For that, let us try to make use of at the rate of JSON property and stop that. You have something called access in JSON property. In that, you have something called read only, which means you can only read this field. You cannot write to this field. All these aspects holds true only during the serialization and deserialization of the JSON object. Whereas you can use the setter and getter inside your API, just like an another model. So in this case, I'm going to make the response code and response text as read-only fields. 
and let us try to run this and let us try to examine the behavior okay before that what i did is like i'm also going to set the student dot uh, response code and you know response text before you know sending the response back okay let's try to run this example the server is up and running let's move on to our postman all right you know postman just to show you how this works what i'm going to do is i'm going to give a response code let's say one two three four five and i'm going to do a response text which is going to be a simple text and let me click on send all right we have got the student's object here and let's examine this student object do you see the difference now even though we try to send a response code and response text in our request our api did not accept that value it is now null and you can only set this value inside the api and return a response now do you see the difference We have got the response code from our API even though we tried to inject this. This is an excellent example of JSON property usage in APIs. Let me give you another scenario. Let us say that you want to accept an element in the request and process that element, but you don't want that element to go out in the response. Let us take our example itself. Let's say the major, right? The string major I can accept it in the request but when it goes in the response I don't want this major field should be included in my response you can again use the JSON property set the access to write only which means during deserialization the element will be mapped to major but during serialization this element will not be sent out in the response. Let us try to quickly run this example. Okay, the server is up and running. Let us quickly try to fire this request. In our previous request, we got the major as physics from the response. But now when I click on send, I should not be getting this major field. Let me click on send. We have got the response and you could see here, the major field has been removed in the serialization process. So this is an another example of usage of JSON property. I hope you really like this video guys. Please subscribe for more such videos. Thank you.